Dad takes us to Krispy Kreme and tells us his favorite story. Again. Didn't Mom say no more donuts, J.B. asked Dad? What your mother doesn't know won't hurt her, he answers, biting into his third chocolate glazed crueler. Good shooting today. We beat those boys like they stole something, he adds. Why don't we take their money, Dad? I ask. Your kids filthy just like y'all. The look on their faces after we beat them 11 to nothing was enough for me. Remember when you were two and I taught you the game? You had a bottle in one hand and a ball in the other, and your mom thought I was crazy. I was crazy, crazy in love with my twin boys. Once when you were three, I took you to the park to shoot free throws. The guy who worked there said, This basket is 10 feet tall. For older kids, kids like yours might as well shoot at the sun. And then he laughed, and I asked him if a deaf person could write music, and he said, Huh? Then took out his wrench and told me, I'm going to lower the goal for y'all. We remember, Dad. And then you told us Beethoven was a famous musician who was deaf. And how many times do we have to hear the same end? Dan interrupts me. Interrupt me again, and I'll start all over. Like I was saying, I handed both of you a ball, stood you between the foul line and the rim, told you to shoot. You did, and it was musical, like the opening of Beethoven's fifth. da 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 your shots whistled like a train pulling into the station. I expected you to make it, and then you did. The guy was in shock. He looked at me like he'd missed the train. Basketball rule number three. Never let anyone lower your goals. Others' expectations of you are determined by their limitations of life. The sky is your limit, sons. Always shoot for the sun, and you will shine. Josh's play-by-play. The Red Rockets, defending county champions, are in the house tonight. They brought their whole school. This place is oozing crimson. They're beating us 29 to 28 with less than a minute to go. I'm at the free throw line. All I have to do is make both shots to take the lead. The first is up, up, and clank. It hits the rim. The second looks real good. Missed again, but Bonnie grabs the rebound. A fresh 24 on the shot clock. Number 33 on the Rockets. Strips the ball from Vondi. This game is like ping pong. With all the back and forth, he reaches down court for an easy lay. Oh, Houston, we have a problem. I catch him and slap the ball on the glass. Ever seen anything like this from a seventh grader? Didn't think so. Me and JB are stars in the making. The Rockets full court press me, but I get it across the line just in time. Ten seconds left. I pass the ball to JB. They double-team him in a hurry. Don't want to give him an easy three. Five seconds left. JB lobs the ball. I rise like a Learjet. Seventh graders aren't supposed to dunk, but guess what? I snatch the ball out of the air and slam yam in your mug. Who's the man? Let's look at that again. Oh, I forgot. This is junior high. No instant replay until college. Well, with a game like this, that's where me and JB are headed. The new girl comes up to me after the game, her smile ocean wide, my mouth wide shut. Nice dunk, she says. Thanks. Y'all coming to the gym over the Thanksgiving break? Probably. Cool. By the way, why'd you cut your locks? They were kind of cute. Standing right behind me, Vondi giggles. Kind of cute, he mocks. Then JB walks up. Hey, JB, great game. I brought you some iced tea, she says. Is it sweet, he asks. And just like that, JB and the new girl are sipping sweet tea together. I miss, free, I miss three free throws tonight. Each night after dinner, Dad makes us shoot free throws until we make ten in a row. Tonight, he says, I have to make fifteen. Basketball rule number four. If you miss enough of life's free throws, you will pay in the end. Having a mother is good when she rescues you from free throw attempt number 36. Your arms as heavy as sea anchors. But it can be bad when your mother is a principal at your school. Bad in so many ways. It's always education this and education that. After a double overtime basketball game, I only want three things. Food, bath, sleep. The last thing I want is education. But each night, Mom makes us read. Don't know how he does it, but JB listens to his iPod at the same time, so he doesn't hear me when I ask him, is Miss Sweet Tea his girlfriend? He claims he's listening to French classical, that it helps him concentrate. Yeah, right. Sounds more like Jay-Z and Kanye in Paris, which is why when Mom and Dad start arguing, he doesn't hear them either. Mom shouts, get a checkup. Hypertension is genetic. I'm fine. Stop posting me, baby. Dad whispers, don't play me, Charles. This isn't a basketball game. I don't need a doctor. I'm fine. Your father didn't need a doctor either. He was alive when he went into the hospital. So now you're afraid of hospitals? Nobody's afraid. I'm fine. It's not that serious. Fainting is a joke, is it? I saw you, baby, and I got a little excited. Come kiss me. Don't do that. Baby, it's nothing. I just got a little dizzy. You love me? Like summer love short nights. Get a checkup then. Only cure I need is you. I'm serious about this, Chuck. Only doctor I need is Dr. Crystal Bell. Now come here. And then there's silence. So I put the pillow over my head because when they stop talking, I know what that means. Ugh. 
Hypertension. It's a noun. A disease otherwise known as high blood pressure, as in mom doesn't want dad eating salt because too much of it increases the volume of blood, which can cause hypertension. As in hypertension can affect all types of people. But you have a higher risk if someone in your family has had the disease. As in I think my grandfather died of hypertension. To fall asleep, I count and recount the 37 strands of my past in the box beneath my bed. Why we only ate salad for Thanksgiving? Because every year Grandma makes a big delicious dinner, but this year, two days before Thanksgiving, she fell off her front stoop on the way to buy groceries. So Uncle Bob, my mom's younger brother, who smokes cigars and thinks he's a chef because he watches food TV, decided he would prepare a feast for the whole family, which consisted of mac with no cheese, concrete hard cornbread, and a greenish-looking ham that prompted Mom to ask if he had any eggs to go along with it, which made Grandma laugh so hard she fell again, this time right out of her wheelchair. How do you spell trouble? During the vocabulary test, J.B. passes me a folded note to give to Miss Sweet Tea, who sits at the desk in front of me, who looks pretty tight in her pink denim capris and matching sneaks. Someone cracks a window, a cold breeze whistles, her hair dances to its own song. In this moment, I forget about the test and the note until J.B. hits me in the head with his number two. Somewhere between camaraderie and imbecile, I tap her beige bare shoulder with a note. At that exact moment, the, teacher, the teacher's head creeps up from his desk, his eyes directly on me. I'm a fly caught in a web. What do I do? Hand over the note, embarrass J.B., or hide the note, take the heat. I look at my brother, his forehead a factory of sweat. Miss Sweet Tea smiles, gorgeous pink lips and all. I know what I have to do. Bad news. I sit in Mom's office for an hour reading brochures and pamphlets about the Air Force and the Marines. She's in and out handling principal stuff, a parent protesting her daughter's F, a prank substitute teacher crying, a broken window. After an hour, she finally sits in the chair next to me and says, the good news is I'm not going to suspend you. The bad news, Josh, is that neither Duke nor any other college accepts cheaters. Since I can't seem to make a decent man out of you, perhaps the Air Force and Marines can. I want to tell her I wasn't cheating, and this is all JB and Miss Sweet Tea's fault. This will never happen again. The Duke is the only thing that matters, but a water pipe bursts in the girl's bathroom. So I tell her, I'm sorry, it won't happen again, then head off to my next class. Gym class is supposed to be about balls, volleyballs, basketball, softball, soccer balls, sometimes sit-ups and always sweat. But today Mr. Lane tells us not to dress out. He's standing in front of the class, a dummy laid out on the floor, plastic, faceless, torso cut in half. I'm not paying attention to anything he's saying or to the dummy because I'm watching Jordan pass notes to Miss Sweet Tea and wonder what's in the notes. Josh, why don't you come up and assist me? What, huh? The class snickers, and before I know it, I'm tilting the dummy's head back, pitching, pinching his nose, blowing in his mouth, and pumping his chest 30 times, all the while thinking that is, if life is really fair, one day I'll be the one writing notes to some sweet girl, and JB will have to squash his lips on some dummy's sweaty mouth. Conversation. Hey, JB. I played a pickup game at the rec today. At first, the older guys laughed and wouldn't let me in unless I could hit from half court. Of course, I did all net. I wait for JB to say something, but he just smiles, his eyes all moony. I showed, him, I showed them guys how the Bells ball. I scored 14 points. They told me I should try out for junior varsity next year because I got hops. JB, are you listening? JB nods, his fingers tapping away on his computer, chatting probably with Miss Sweet Tea. I told the big guys about you, too. They said we could come back and run with them any time. What do you think about that? Hello, Earth the JB. Even though I know he hears me, the only thing JB is listening to is the sound of his heart bouncing on the court of love. Conversation. Dad, this new girl, this girl is making Jordan act weird. He's here, but he's not. He's always smiling. His eyes get all spacey whenever she's around, and sometimes when she's not, he wears your cologne. He's always texting her. He even wore loafers to school, Dad. You gotta do something. Dad does something. He laughs. Filthy. Talking to your brother right now would be like pushing water uphill with a rake, son. This isn't funny, Dad. Say something to him, please. Filthy, if some girl done locked up JB, he's going, to, he's going to jail. Now let's go get some donuts. Basketball rule number five. When you stop playing your game, you've already lost. Show off. Up by 16 with six seconds showing. JB smiles, then struts, side steps, stutters, spins, and sinks a six slick, siding, sweet seven foot shot. What a show off. Out of control. Are you kidding me? Come on, ref, open your eyes. Ray Charles could have seen that kid walked. Call a traveling violation. You guys are terrible. Mom wasn't at the game tonight, which meant that all night dad was free to yell at the officials, which he did. Mom calls me into the kitchen. 
After we get home from beating St. Francis, normally she wants me to sample the macaroni and cheese to make sure it's cheesy enough, or the oven-baked fried chicken to make sure it's not greasy and stuff, but today on the table is some gross-looking orange creamy dip with brown specks in it. A tray of pita bread triangles is beside it. Maybe Mama's having one of her book club meetings. Sit down, she says. I sit as far away from the dip as possible. Maybe the chicken is in the oven. Where's your brother, she asks. Probably on the phone with that girl. She hands me a pita. No thanks, I say, then stand up to leave. She gives me a look that tells me she's not finished with me. Maybe the Mac is in the oven. We talked to you about, you two, about your grandfather, she says. He was a good man. I'm sorry you never got to meet him, Josh. Me too. He looked cool in his uniforms. That man was way past cool. Dad said he used to curse a lot and talk about the war. Mom's laugh is short. Then she's serious again. I know we told you Grandpa died after a fall, but the truth is he fell because he had a stroke. He had a heart disease too. Many years of bad eating and not taking care of himself. And so, what does this have to do with anything, I ask, even though I think I already know? Well, our family has a history of heart problems, she says, so we're going to start eating better, especially Dad, and we're going to start tonight with some hummus and pita bread. For my victory dinner? Josh, we're going to try to lay off the fried foods and Golden Dragon, and when your dad takes you to the rec center, no pollards or Krispy Kreme afterwards, understand? And I understand more than she thinks I do, but is hummus really the answer?